Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I'm back again with another cool case from Cooler Master. So, a little history here. The Cosmos series of cases from Cooler Master is sort of like Cooler Master's version of a Lincoln Continental or a Cadillac. They're massive, they're heavy, they've got a ton of features. Over the years, there have been several iterations or variations of this case. Currently, though, we've got the uh, C700M, the Infinity 30th Anniversary, and the C700P Black Edition. This is the one we've got today. And it's going to be a lot of fun going over the details, but first, we'll take a look at the box. So this case is not brand new. It's not like it just came out. It's been out for a little while, but it's still very relevant and uh, worth taking a look at. So I can tell you right now, it says right here, caution, carry with two people. They are not kidding. I almost killed myself getting this thing up on the table. It is massive. And looks like the box took a pretty good hit right there, but hopefully everything is okay on the inside. I don't think there's really any, nothing there. There's a graphic here that sort of shows an exploded view, but Boy, the box is scuffed up a little. It might be a little hard to see what's going on there. It looks like, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a modular case. You can take the motherboard tray out and you can flip it around. So you've got a couple options there that we'll explore a little later. And here's some of the uh, specs here on the side. Uh, let's see, it sort of talks about flat radiator back at, bleh, brackets, fine mesh panels, cable cover system, versatile layout. So the unique frame design supports conventional chimney and inverse layout. So that's where we've got the uh, chassis here that can be sort of flipped around. Uh, we've also got extensive cable cover systems. So cable management should be nice. Diverse liquid cooling support. Of course, a case this size, that's not really uh, a surprise. Curved tempered glass side panels. Uh, and all this stuff is in several languages. And looking at the specs on the side, I don't know why they couldn't have put that sticker up a little higher, but it doesn't look like they covered up too much. So here uh, is the list of the basic information. So motherboard support, that's an important thing. Again, not a surprise, it covers the smallest motherboard, but it goes all the way up to uh, an extended ATX. You got eight expansion slots. It's got a five and a quarter inch bay, like for an optical drive, and that's getting hard to find now. We've got several bays for uh, hard drive, solid state drives, USB. We've got three of those ports, a USB 3.1 Gen 2, Type C. Uh, let's see what else. So we've got fans. Okay, so pre installed fans. This, uh, this is what comes with the case. So you've got a 140, two of those up front, 1200 RPM fans. You've got one in the rear. And then we've got fan support. So this means what it's capable of. So we can go up to three. 140s in the top, three 140s in the front, uh, up to a 140 in the rear. Uh, let's see, bottom. So it looks like there's a special bracket needed. So you can go up to two fans on the bottom. Radiator support. Okay, here's the other thing. So if you take the optical drive out, that five and a quarter bay we talked about a moment ago, you can go up to 360 in the top. The front, we've got uh, 120 all the way up to 420. Again, we have to remove that optical drive cage again. Radiator support in the rear up to 140. Bottom, you can actually put up to 240 in the bottom. CPU cooler, okay, so we've got 198 millimeters. That's, that's plenty, that's a lot of space there for a very large air cooler. Power supply graphics card. So we'll look at that, okay. Um, now I'll get this thing off the table <laughs> and try to get it out of the box. And actually, before I get it out of the box here, let me talk about the fans and the radiators. And the reason I say that, it's one thing to read about it on the side of the box. I'm more visually oriented, so I need to see uh, what's happening rather than read about it. It makes more sense to me. And I get a lot of questions from people uh, in the comments about, well, will this radiator fit here? And will these fans fit there? So I just want to go over this graphically. All right, so cooling support radiators in the top. We've got 120, 140, 240, 280. That's all pretty standard. 360 and 420, but you have to remove the optical drive bay if you're not going to use it to allow enough room for those really long radiators to fit. 
Okay, the front, we've got room for a 120, 140, 240, 280, again, pretty standard, 360, pretty standard. The 420, though, again, you have to remove the optical drive bay up here uh, to get enough room for a 420. Uh, rear, we've got a 120 or a 140 back here. The bottom, we can go up to a 240 millimeter radiator in the bottom, if you like. Moving on to fan support, uh, at the top, we've got room for uh, let's see, 120, 140 millimeter fans. Looks like three of either, either of those you can put in the top. Front is the same. So you can put either three 120s or three 140s. The rear, we've got a 120 or a 140. And the bottom, you've got 120 or 140 times two. Requires a bracket. I'll have to look into that a little later. So hopefully that answers those questions. And again, on the motherboard support, we've got uh, standard ATX, micro ATX, and a mini ITX. Uh, we've actually got support, if you look over here, uh, an extended ATX or an EATX uh, up to 12 inches by 10.7 may impact cable management options. What that usually means is it covers up your holes here for the, or the grommets for your cables. So that may or may not be a problem. Storage support, we've got a lot of options here for hard drives, uh, solid state drives, if you uh, need that much space. And uh, again, this is where your solid state drives would go. You can put some on the back of the motherboard. And that pretty much covers what I wanted to look at before we actually get it out of the box. All right. Actually, one more thing. Here's a really cool expanded view that shows you all of the different panels uh, in case you get the case halfway torn apart and you're not sure how the things fit back together. Okay, finally, now we can get it out of the box. All right, so the box is open. There's the manual and some sort of cover or uh, back plate. I think that's for the back of the case. There's the hardware box, actually accessory box. And now we can get piece of styrofoam out of there. Oh, there we go. That really looks nice. Trick will be getting it out of the box. Alright, so it looks like whatever that damage was on the side of the box, uh, it didn't do anything to the case. Everything looks good. And the stance here of the feet on the bottom, it's so wide it won't sit on my little glass turntable. I thought that would be nice to uh, be able to spin it around, but it looks like I'm not going to be able to use it, but that's okay. You know what really stands out at first are these handles on the top. I really like that. So now I need to start getting all of the tape and everything they use to secure it in shipping out of the way, and then we can start taking a little closer look. All right, so there's the front panel, it appears to be plastic, and it pops right out, but it tilts forward and then it locks. So you've got these little hinges there that it swings on. Actually, those are catches and they stop it from going any further forward. So you can sort of see your front mesh panel, see if it needs to be cleaned. You can get to your optical drive on top, although it has two slots here, but really only the top one is functional as a five and a quarter drive. And I'll show why here in a moment. But I like the way this pops in and out very easily. It's not real violent. It's locked in place very firmly, but it also comes out very easily. Now, if you want to take this out, you just sort of, after it's tilted forward, you lift up a little bit and it comes right out and you can see how that sort of goes together. And there's a sound deadening panel in here to help reduce any fan noise. And again, there are two slots there. And what I like here is, okay, so let's just say this is all covered with dust uh, from these two front fans. Well, this comes out pretty nicely. And sometimes these things, and it always, I have to laugh a little bit because sometimes these front filter panels 
are locked in so well, when you pop them out, they snap out so violently that there's this giant waft of dust that you kick up. And if your system happens to be on, your fans suck that big cloud of dust in and blow it right in your case. So uh, this one comes out nice and easily. And again, those are the two uh, five and a quarter slots. Now, if you look inside though, you might think, well, why can't I put a second one in there? And what they've done, so this is your little frame for your top five and a quarter drive, but this frame for your fans, you know, you could take this frame out and add a second one, I guess, if you wanted to, but you would lose uh, the mounting for your front fans. And I mean, you got to have some fans in front. And uh, there's room in there for a third fan if you wanted to add one. And you can put three 120s or three 140s. And these are, look at that cable, these are three pin fans. They're non RGB. They're just the standard workhorse fans. Uh, design's been around since like forever. But that's what the front looks like. So your front dust cover is pretty easy to get out of there. And I'll go ahead and pop it right back in. So it looks like it just sort of sets in at the bottom and then pushes in, pushes in at the top, locks into position. And then the front panel, if you want to put it back in, you sort of got to get this little tab down there in that slot and then rock it forward and there you go so the fit and finish there is pretty good now the side panels here this side is metal and it seems to open and close pretty smooth smoothly if I can speak uh, the hinge back there it uh, seems to hold it in position wherever you move it and when it closes, it almost seems like there's a magnet somewhere. In fact, it feels like this here has a magnet in it because once it gets close to that, it sort of locks in there. And it's easy to uh, open up, but when it locks in, it's not going anywhere. And the same for the glass. I'm going to try and stay out of the reflection because... And, and, I'm always a little paranoid when I first open a big glass door, but it's uh, it's not going anywhere. And it uses the same magnet uh, to hold it in position when it's closed. So it takes a little bit of force to break it free, but it opens right up. And it's a little hard to tell because it's dark, but there are some key slots back in here that and I'll, and I'll pop this out later just to show you, but there's some key slots that the door sits in. So if you need to remove the door, it looks like you just give it sort of a quick pull up and uh, the glass panel will come out of the hinge assembly there in the back. Now looking down here at the skis on the bottom of the feet, there's about 220 millimeters from side to side if I measure between, between there. And uh, wow, my tabletop is dirty. But height-wise, clearance, you've got about 40, 45 millimeters, maybe. A little hard to tell there. But there's quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of air space under there, so you don't have to worry about choking the air feed from the bottom of the case. You know, some cases they sit so close to the ground, if you set them down on carpet or a rug, uh, it really restricts the airflow. Now, here's another nice thing. Again, very easy to remove the bottom filter panel here. And it slides on a couple tracks. So this is easy to remove. Again, you're not going to stir up a whole bunch of dust as long as you're reasonably careful when you pull it out. And then it pops right back into position. So that's the entire bottom floor that is uh, ventilated there. And looking at the top, I actually had to get up on a little step ladder because I'm short and this thing sitting on the table is too tall for me to get up here and see. So anyway, uh, like I said, the first thing that caught my eye when I got this thing out of the box were these nice handles across the top. And these things are very rigid. Uh, they seem to add some rigidity to the case. And a lot of times when you push on a case side to side, it'll rack on you a little bit. This thing is very firm. So there's the ventilated top section and uh, buttons. It looks like this one here is the reset button 
There's your power button. Over here we have a fan button. It looks like two speeds, high and low. Over here on the right, there's a button for, it looks like uh, lighting effects there, so you can change the lighting effects. And that's what these little sort of whitish sections of plastic are on either side. And then across the front here, this is for the lighting effects. And I don't know if they have any others tucked anywhere tucked away anywhere. We'll have to see when we get the case powered up exactly where all the RGB effects are. Looking across the front, you've got your headphone jack, microphone jack. We've got two USB 3.0s there, two on the right. And in the center, you've got a 3.1. And I think this panel here, let's see how this, yep, pops right out. And again, I like it. It's, it's not real violent. But of course, you're usually blowing air out the top and if the front filters have done their job, there really shouldn't be much dust on this one. And then looking at the top, there's the bracket to hold your radiator and or fans. And that should come out, looks like, yeah, screws back here. So, and again, I'll, I'll get this chassis apart as far as I can get it. And then we'll uh, sort of go over all the different radiator mounting options and fan mounting options. So far, I really like the fitment of the panels. I know sometimes, you know, you go to remove these things and it feels like you're gonna break them to get them out, but uh, so far everything, everything operates very smoothly. So there's the bottom of the case. I've got it tilted up. I really don't wanna put the full weight of the case on the back because it's not really designed to hold that much weight. There's a little bit of styrofoam debris from the packing, a little bit of dust there, but you don't see many cases where the bottom of the case looks, uh, looks as nice as the top. Usually they're pretty ugly down there. And you can see on the side here, we've got that white strip. Uh, it looks like we've got some RGB effects that go along the bottom parallel to the skis. But that's probably, if I were giving an award for the best looking case bottom, I would say this one would definitely win top honors. And here is the back of the case. I flipped it around here so you could see it. And this is that panel that I first saw when I opened the case it was sitting on top, you'll notice it's the same size as the back. This is for that alternate uh, inverted motherboard layout, so we'll see how this comes into play a little later. But there's the back of the case, so here's where your power supply would go. You can see there's a, a little shelf to support it, and it's got some little rubber pads there, like little runners there for your power supply to sit on. Help, you know, they're, they're rubber, so they'll help. Uh, one, they won't scratch your case or your the case of your power supply up when you slide it in there. And two, uh, they offer a little bit of uh, sound deadening or vibration isolation. So we've got our slots here, our PCIe slots. You'll notice a lot of cases now have this section for a vertical GPU, and this case does not have that. So keep that in mind if you're really looking for uh, a case that supports a vertical GPU mount. So there's the rear included 140 millimeter fan. You can see it's got slots for a 120 if you want to put it in there. And you can slide this fan up or down a little bit uh, if you need to make room for like a radiator or, or anything that's going on at the top. And then we got a couple grommets here, pass through grommets. I see a lot of cases that have those. And honestly, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody use those, but hey, if you need them, there they are. And for whatever reason, this, this uh, let's see, this back trim piece pops out. So I guess it's sort of, uh, it sort of completes the back of the case when that's when that's in there. But you pop it out so that I guess you can get to things a little easier on the back. But that's what this piece here is, just an extra trim piece. And now that I look at it, it looks like, uh, I'll take these screws out of here a little later, but it looks like this whole frame for your power supply comes out when you take all these screws out. and. I'm guessing you can slide your power supply in this way instead of coming in from inside the case. That's usually what these removable back panels are for. And here's the back side of the case, or the behind the motherboard, I should say. It's a metal panel. Opens pretty easily there. These are those little key slots I was talking about earlier. So again, I'll, I'll pop these panels off and show you how they come off the hinges in a little bit. But there's the back of the motherboard tray. And uh, you can see we've got room for a couple of solid state drives there on these removable brackets. I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver, those are in there pretty tight. 
Uh, cable management should be a breeze here. There's just a ton of room down here underneath this power supply shroud. Here's that little shelf for your power supply we looked at earlier. And then there's this big cover here that uh, sort of keeps whatever's going on behind it with your cables sort of out of view from this side. Although, you know, if this were glass, that would be a concern because you could see it. But when that's closed, you can't really see what's going on there anyway. And actually, as I was looking at this, I realized behind this one, and this screw came right out, wasn't very tight. But there's your controller. There's your uh, fan controller and RGB controller. So on the right, you can see these are the leads coming in from the three included fans. And we've got three more empty places there that we could add three more fans and control fan speed through this controller. And then on the left, this is your RGB uh, control so it looks like there's one extra socket at the upper left there so I don't know if that's for another LED strip I'll have to look in to see what uh, what can be controlled there but there is one extra slot so I thought that was actually a place for another SSD but turns out that's where your RGB control panel is located all right, as far as cables go, there's some desiccant there to keep the moisture out. But we've got one connector here for the two USB 3.0 on one side, a second connector for the other two USB 3.0 uh, positions. Here is your HD audio, yep. Here's your USB 3.1 connector. So if your motherboard supports that, that's where that would plug into. And these go to your motherboard for case control, power reset, hard drive activity. And then the cables coming out of that controller, uh, it looks like there is one, here it is, to synchronize your RGB, your case RGB, with your motherboard. That's what this little guy here is for. So this would plug into your motherboard to sort of link the case with the motherboard. So all your RGB effects can be synchronized. All right, so the moment I know some of you have been waiting for, you're like, dude, open the case. All right, here we go. Now let's take a look inside the case. Now as I tear into this uh, in a little more detail, I'll show you which panels are removable and which ones, although it looks like pretty much everything is removable because I see screws everywhere instead of rivets. You know, usually uh, when you see rivets, you know you're pretty limited on what you can or can't do. But the focus of this case design is the uh, modularity of it. But anyway, it has a fully ventilated power supply shroud. There's a little uh, water pump bracket, so if you do a custom, custom loop, I'll have to see. Surely that is removable but probably the screws are from the bottom over here we've got these little shelves whoa I lost my contrast there all right so we've got these shelves for your hard drives and it looks like we've got spaces for uh, more of these shelves if we wanted to uh, add them they're probably available to a cooler master and there's the 120 millimeter Rear exhaust fan that I already showed it can slide up or down. PCIe slots, and again, we do not have any provisions for a vertical GPU mount. Okay, so that was sort of a walk around of the obvious exterior and interior features, but now I'm going to dig down into it uh, a bit more. And if I didn't mention it already earlier, this is a modular case, which means your motherboard can be uh, mounted in three different orientations. Now as it comes from the factory this is the first orientation and you can see this is like the standard position for the motherboard where your I.O. Uh, points out toward the rear of the case. And of course since this is a modular case that means most of these uh, interior pieces, the chassis components, are removable and reconfigurable so I'll be taking these uh, components down. We'll strip the case down as far as we can go. First thing you want to do is get the doors off. And if you recall, the doors are held on with these pins that drop into the key slots there on this hinge. Uh, and it's kind of tight, so you got to be careful when you pull the door off 
uh, that it doesn't get away from you. So uh, get a second person to help you. And the doors actually came off a little easier than I was expecting. I thought they were going to be wedged in there pretty good, but they pretty much popped right off. So this is sort of a state of the case where you want to really start thinking about your build if you haven't already. Uh, things like if you're using a liquid cooler, where do you want to put the radiator? Top and the front, maybe even down at the bottom. Uh, if you're using RGB fans, where do you want to put the fans? Here they would work out just fine in the top. You can see the lighting effects very easily through that mesh. But the front, as you can see, the uh, factory case fans are sort of tucked in there, but it's very dark. They're obscured. There's a little opening here where some light can get out. But to really show off RGB fans, you need to remove this uh, front panel right here. And you can get away with that. The case looks fine without it. But if you're going to put your RGB fans in there, you just about have to take this front panel off in order to show them off. So those are some of the things you need to sort of plan ahead uh, where you're going to mount your hard drives. Now, like I said earlier, I think I'm not going to be using any three and a half inch drives. I've sort of migrated away from those myself. So what I'll be doing is taking this section out here. This is actually, these are mounts for uh, solid state drives. And the two and a half inch drives, I've almost completely gotten away from those too. I'm uh, down to really just using the NVMe M.2 drives. So for me, I'll take this out. Uh, I'll end up taking this back plane out here with these uh, hard drive mounts. And since I don't use uh, optical drives really anymore, I'll be taking the optical drive mount out of there too. So it'll really free this whole area up and uh, clear it out. And we'll take a quick look at the hardware box or accessory box, I think is what it's called. Yeah, accessory box. We've got some tie wraps like a cleaning cloth yes to keep your side glass panel nice and clean ah, all kinds of screws fasteners uh, yeah there's the little adapter uh, to put the hex standoffs on the motherboard in case you're configuring it for something other than an ATX but these are mostly for uh, when you do your uh, reconfiguration for your motherboard mounting. Uh, let's see, this looks like an adapter for RGB. And then we've got a couple of metal brackets there. Again, part of the uh, process of moving the motherboard around for a different configuration. So that's what the little cable looks like now this is the main mount for your power supply sometimes it's easier to bring the power supply in from the back of the case and there are four screws that hold this in and you can see there are four more screws and that holds this uh, basically floor for your power supply to the bracket there so you don't have to take those other four screws out but you can if uh, if you want to. Actually, I'm going to leave this out. The next thing I'll do is see if this uh, section here, this whole shroud, comes out. Again, everything uses screws, so it looks like there's some screws there, a couple of screws there, and we've got one here and probably one here, and there might be a couple more in the front. Now I got all the screws out, and you can see the panel here. Uh, it does move around a little bit, but it looks like there are a couple more screws uh, on the back here. There's probably a flange. Yeah, there's a flange that kicks down. So what I'll have to do is take this panel off here so that I can access those last two screws. All right, so I have the case flipped around. Uh, there are only two screws that hold this in, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then this sort of pulls to the right and then uh, comes out. So that reveals really just about everything you need to access from this point forward. Uh, okay, so it looks like there's a screw here and that's it. There's just one. I thought there were two screws. There's just the one here. So let's see what that does. Oh yeah, the whole thing's loose. All right, so I got the case flipped around again, so we're looking at the 
inside. All right, so that's nice. So this entire shroud comes out. Four screws hold this plate on. So if you want to take it off, that's pretty easy to do. And it even looks like, oh, okay. So this is actually in two pieces. So that's nice. And when you get your shroud out, that really exposes the uh, hole inside, the, basically the floor of the case. And there really isn't a floor the way it's set up right now, because uh, what looks like the floor is actually your bottom filter panel that slides out. So you've got a straight shot right to the, right to the floor when you take your filter panel out. So I think uh, next I'll go ahead and get this uh, bracket and all of these hard drive uh, shelves out of the way. And it looks like this whole sub chassis here is, okay, so it's not actually connected to the motherboard. It looks like there are just four screws, so two at the top and two at the bottom. It looks like this whole assembly will come out. It's actually uh, it's actually tied to the wiring, so okay, so now that's free. Get this last screw out. Yeah, I can tell that's gonna come right out. All right, so yeah, that just pops right out. Takes a little bit of coaxing, but okay, so it doesn't come out quite as easily as I thought. Yeah, it's just a little stiff in there. Okay. Oh, I've got some wires uh, going through there. All right, so let me get those out of the way. So the modularity of the case is even more obvious as you can see this bottom rail here has multiple holes and the same rail on the opposite side has the same mounting provisions the same thing up here at the top so we have a lot of different ways you can mount this so one of the ways is to take this motherboard and flip it 90 degrees for the chimney uh, mounting style in which case your uh, PCIe slots instead of facing out the back would be facing up uh, and really, that is what this other, let's see if I can find it, this piece right here. So when you flip your motherboard uh, up 90 degrees, so your PCIe slots are facing up, you would now need to put this panel in, I don't know if it goes this way or this way, probably doesn't matter, and then your cables can come out of either one of these grommets. And of course, if you do the motherboard on the opposite side of the case, then you'll be using these rails here and the one at the top to uh, basically mount your uh, support here and the motherboard uh, tray would uh, mount on the opposite side. And you can see the holes over here. And now we'll take a quick look at the top. So what's nice when you're doing a system build is when you can get your case as open as you possibly can just makes things go so much more smoothly so uh, this top bracket here this is for your fans or your radiator just two screws and this lifts out it's actually got a couple tabs and some notches on this end so now you have complete uh, access to the top of your motherboard as you're building your system and that goes a long way towards getting all of your uh, power cables for your CPU attached to the top of the motherboard a lot of times there's not much room this just makes things so much easier so I had to get the case back up on the table uh, to show the front here so we take the front panel off that exposes the vented section here and this actually pops out too but it's easier if you come in from the back and just push on it and it just pops right out this makes it a lot easier to clean because this will trap a lot of fuzz and dust. And then these two sections here can come out if you're going to put an optical drive. You can leave one in or take them both out. If you want, 
Now this bracket here is very much like the one for the top. In fact, let's see if it's not the same one. So this is the top one that we took out. This looks, yeah, this looks to be identical. So they use the same bracket uh, in the top of the case that they use on the front for the fan. So that means I should be able to just take out these two screws here. Now the fans are still plugged in, so it won't uh, they won't come out completely. But you can see it already starts to tilt forward, and it should lift. Yeah, it lifts right out. Okay, so again, this will make installing fans and a uh, front-mounted radiator so much easier. Now, when you take the hard drive tray out, um, let's see. Looks like one, two, three, four screws. Not hard drive tray, the optical drive tray. And then this center bracket here remains because that's what your fan mount uh, attaches to. So let me go ahead and get those other screws out. If you remember years ago, there was a time when every case had an optical drive and sometimes more than one. And uh, I, I really can't remember the last time I used an optical drive. It's been that long ago. It's just like a floppy drive. You know, there's a time when you couldn't live without it. And then when they're replaced by whatever the new technology is, you tend to forget how important they once were. So that optical drive uh, support would have to come out if you're using a really long radiator in the top, the 420 millimeter radiator in the top or the front. So either way, that would have to come out. And I think for now, I'll just go ahead and leave those fans in that configuration. Get a couple screws back in there. All right, so since it's getting very close to the system build time, we'll talk about some of the hardware going into the case. Uh, originally, I was going to use the Master Liquid ML360 Illusion. We've got the cool RGB fans and the RGB effects on the pump, but I didn't realize that the uh, socket coverage here, uh, we don't cover the LGA1700 uh, on this particular cooler, so we won't be using it. Instead, we'll be using the Master Liquid PL360 Flux which uh, has the LGA 1700 socket coverage. I was going to be using the power supply here, uh, the MWE 750 Gold, but since we will be using the RTX 4090, the minimum requirements for power recommended by NVIDIA is uh, 850 watts. So we'll be using the V850i. Uh, we've got the proper power connector coverage built right into the power supply so that when we plug it in we're ready to go. Uh, as for the motherboard I'll be using the Z690 carbon Wi-Fi from MSI along with a 12700 KF CPU. All right we've got the system build underway this is the MSI Z690 carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. CPU let me zoom in, is the 12700KF. For you first time system builders, uh, it's a good idea to get all of the screws started before you tighten them down. So you don't want to put one screw in and tighten it down because uh, the alignment of all the rest of the mounting studs with the holes in the motherboard, sometimes you have to shift it around a little. In this case, they all lined up just absolutely perfectly, but you never know. Now, you can see the access to the top of the motherboard there is, well, it's all open since I took that top bracket out. Now, access to your motherboard to get everything plugged in, in this case, is not a big deal since this case is so massive. But, it's a good idea to get these plugged in sooner than later because what can happen is, especially if you have a shallow case and there's not a lot of room to work, uh, you'll find it's almost impossible to get these cables in here and get them plugged in. It's very difficult, especially if you use a large uh, air cooler that uh, pretty much obscures this area. And again, in this case, there's a lot of clearance here between 
on the top of the motherboard and the top of the case. Now you get a radiator and some fans in here, of course that uh, takes up some of that space, but save yourself some headaches and get these plugged in before you get the rest of your system too far along. I did just go ahead and put this mounting bracket for the power supply back in the case because with the shroud out of the way, I can access everything I need to. So I put that back in. And another thing I noticed, uh, Cooler Master looks like they used so far, I haven't come across any that were different, but they use the same screws for everything. So throughout the case, at least so far, I haven't encountered any different screws. So that is so nice when it comes to uh, putting things back together. You can just grab the, any of the screws you took out and you don't have to worry about uh, different thread pitch or different lengths. So that's nice. And we'll get the power supply installed. Again, this is the V850i. And you can put it with the fan facing up or down. And just be careful if you do put it with the fan facing up uh, during the assembly process, make sure you don't drop anything in there. Uh, it's a good idea to just cover this thing with some tape, uh, packing tape or just something to cover it to keep anything from going in there. And then when you're ready to fire your system up, take the tape off. Uh, but I will, in this case, install it with the fan down. Now the only thing is this nice side applique uh, is going to be pretty much obscured, mostly obscured here by the side support, but no big deal. Uh, there'll be a shroud over this anyway, so I guess even if that was exposed, you couldn't really see it. Now it's also a good idea to go ahead and uh, get your cables, figure out which cables you need while everything's open uh, and get those routed. And something else I'll point out, there's a lot of clearance here underneath the power supply, so we don't have any restrictions on the uh, airflow getting into the power supply. So the power supply is installed. I got the four screws in there to hold it uh, on the frame here. And I'm slowly getting the power cables all run. So this is the main 24 pin power to the motherboard. It comes up here through the grommet and connects. Uh, the next thing I have connected, this is your USB 3.0. Uh, connector and you'll notice we've got four USB 3.0 ports on the front but this here is only good for two and the other two actually uh, are for this connector and this motherboard only has one spot for USB 3.0 so what you can do uh, they make little adapter cards little PCIe expansion cards here that have a uh, socket that will allow you to plug this and I actually had one at one point but I don't know where it ended up uh, otherwise you just won't be able to use two of your USB uh, ports some other boards have two of these sockets but this one only has one okay so the next thing I did this is the COM port or the communications port that goes over to a USB header down here and again that will allow the power supply to basically communicate with the uh, software on the motherboard and then the next thing I did is uh, I don't really think I'm going to have any SATA uh, devices, but I went ahead and just plugged one of these SATA connectors in. So I've got the ability to use up to four SATA devices. So I'll just sort of leave this tucked in down here on the bottom. So if I ever need them, uh, this will already be plugged in. Okay, so now I have these uh, two connectors. This is the power to the motherboard and they connect right down here on the power supply. I can use any of these, but I just use the two on the end. Uh, it's a good idea, like I said earlier, to get these plugged in before you get your uh, cooler, if you're going to use a big radiator on top, because it can be tough to get in there. This case is not too bad, but it can be on some cases. And then I went ahead and got the IO panel connectors here on the motherboard, uh, all connected. And there's something I wanna point out here on your USB 3.1 connector here that plugs into your motherboard. If you just look at this real briefly, it looks sort of symmetrical. It looks like it could plug in either way, and I don't know why they made it like that, but it actually only goes in one way. If you look at it closely, you can tell the two sides there are a little different. So if you look at the socket, again, it can be a little confusing because it looks like this could go in either way. But if you look right there, there's a little triangle, and it's only on one side. So no triangle on that side. There's a triangle on that side. And if you look at the socket, there's a little triangle right there. 
right at that corner. So what you want to do is match the side that has the triangle up with the side of the socket that shows a little triangle on the motherboard. And when you push it in, you should hear sort of like a little click. Eh, I felt it more than I heard it. But when you push it in, it will uh, you'll feel sort of a, a final engagement. And that lets you know that it's fully seated. Next, we'll get the cooler in here. And what I have to figure out is, do I want to put the cooler in the top and you don't see the fans quite as well? Or do I want to put the cooler in the front Actually, the front take these two stock fans out and then I'll have the three RGB fans in the front of the case where they're uh, easier to see plus the other thing I'll have to see how well the uh, hoses reach if I put the radiator in the front this is a fairly large case so sometimes uh, it's really a stretch to get the hoses that far uh, it may not be a problem we'll just have to sort of do some test fitting all right, so I sort of been test fitting the cooler and it seems to fit best uh, in the front. So I'm going to put it in the front. I need to flip the fans around to get the wiring to come out on the opposite side, but I'll do that here in a little bit. So right now it's just loose in here, but it just seems to fit better. It seems to look better. Uh, a lot of it depends on how your tubes here want to naturally bend. Uh, you know, sometimes you can put it in the top and the tubes, depending upon the orientation of the pump, just have a natural curve to them and you're not forcing anything into position. And one thing I'll mention briefly here, and there are videos out there that go into a lot of detail, uh, but they talk about how to mount the radiator uh, relative to the pump in terms of the height of the tank. And what you're trying to avoid is cavitation. Cavitation is when you get an air bubble that gets sucked into the pump and uh, the impeller is just spinning in that little air pocket and you're not moving any coolant. Uh, and let me back up a little bit. There will always be a little bit of air in your tank, in your cooler, and that's normal. You have to have a little bit of room for the coolant when it expands uh, to expand into that small volume of air. Typically the volume of air is small enough it doesn't cause a problem. I've had a couple of systems over the years that uh, when I'd turn the computer on, you would hear a little bit of slushing around or a gurgling sound uh, at first. I never had a problem with them as far as uh, cooling issues, but you can watch those videos that talk about this and uh, the philosophies behind why it's best to mount a tank in a certain position. Uh, and you can come to your own conclusions, but I've never had a problem. So we'll see when I get this installed, but I really don't anticipate there being any issues. So I will get this mounted and then uh, I'll get the fans flipped over. And actually, not only do I have to flip them around so the wiring comes out on the opposite side, but I have to actually put them on the front. I had them on the back of the radiator before and uh, that would not have gone too well because I would have been pushing air out of the front of the case. I suppose it would have worked, but you don't get to see the RGB effects if the fans aren't on the front. Now, some people will uh, mount their systems and add a second set of fans in a push-pull configuration. And you can do that, but the systems that I've tested that way, with and without the push-pull, uh, there is a cooling benefit to the additional fans, but it, it may not be as much as you think. At least the testing I have done has shown it to not be... Uh, a huge benefit. In fact, it's more of a hassle because of all the extra wiring and the extra uh, headers that you need to plug the fans in and all that good stuff. So it's up to you if you've got some extra fans and you want to use them, well, why not? But like I said, don't go into it expecting a, a huge cooling benefit. Plus, with double the fans, you get more noise too. All right, so I'll get all of these tightened up. And another thing to mention, the way I'm mounting these fans now, the fans are on the front of the bracket here and the radiator is behind it. So the screw is going through the fan, through the bracket and into the threaded holes on the radiator. There are several different ways you can do it, but if you do it this way, keep in mind that the screw is basically pinching the fan 
so you don't want to be uh, torque happy there and really tighten these down because you're bending the ears and uh, you can actually break them if you if you tighten them too much so you just want to be careful snug them down good and just give them just a little bit of a turn and don't go crazy on the on the torquing again that's just for this particular way that I have it mounted all right so I've got a little change of plans so originally I took these two 140 millimeter fans out of the front of the case these are the factory fans uh, since I put the radiator in the front and my plan was to put some RGB fans in the top since I'm not putting the radiator up there with its included RGB fans so I thought it would be pretty easy just to grab the fans from uh, the Master Liquid ML360 Illusion. Turns out the RGB connectors are different, uh, different configurations, so they would not easily work with the system the way I have it now. Uh, I also have a couple of Master Liquid ML240 and 120 coolers, and the RGB fans on those are also different, uh, different enough that it's not worth the trouble to try and make all that work. So I'm going to relocate these 140 millimeter fans to the top of the case. So here's the bracket that comes out of the top. So I will get these installed. I'll have plenty of airflow. I just won't have the pretty RGB effects, at least not for now. Now I'm always saying pay attention to how you mount your fans on your brackets because you need to watch the direction that they're blowing so you don't have the fans moving air in the wrong direction. There's a little arrow here on the side that shows the direction that the blades turn and then the other arrow right here shows the direction of the airflow. So the airflow is going down. So while I'm telling everyone to pay attention, well, I had the fans flipped over 180 on this bracket because this bracket latches at the front of the case and it screws down at the back of the case. Well, I had the fans in, of course, 180 degrees off. But that's what happens when you're paying attention, but you're not paying attention. All right, so the two 140 millimeter fans that were in the front are now in the top of the case, so they should do the job of getting the warm air from inside the case and pushing it out of the top. And we're slowly putting things back together. I think I'll do a quick test fit of the, of the shroud. Put the shroud back in here. So this is the front panel. Looks like it, yep, yeah, sits right in there. And then the top piece, I don't know if I should take, I think I, I think I will just take this pump bracket off. Actually doubles as a uh, drive mount too. So this just sits in there and these little uh, tabs fit into these little slots, little key slots. Oh, that's nice. Yep, that's gonna look nice. I think I will take that out though. And there's plenty of clearance here. If you did add a second set of fans for a push-pull, uh, you've got room uh, behind the radiator for that. So we'll get all these screws back in. And a nice thing, you know, if you do get this thing sort of back together and you realize that you uh, need to take a panel back off, it's pretty easy to do. So I really like the way they've got all these mounting holes and provisions. And like I said, they use the same screws for everything. So we got the bottom piece in, so I'll go ahead and slide this out of the way and I'll get this bracket off. Another thing I wanna point out real quick, you see we've got two connectors here. One has four pins or can use a four pin connector. This one here uses three. You can see it's a four, but one of them is blocked off. So these are not interchangeable. You cannot uh, plug a three pin connector into this four pin uh, plug. You don't want to do that because this one uses 12 volts for power. This one uses five. Uh, so just make sure you use a three pin connector to a three pin socket, four pin connector to a four pin socket. This actually plugs into the motherboard. This plugs into the motherboard too, but you need to make sure you uh, plug the right connector into the right socket. All right, so as I continue to put this all back together, uh, there's this entire frame that holds your hard drive mounts, and it goes in here like this. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking the hard drive trays off. So th there were two of them up here. There are two at the bottom. Uh, I'll leave the ones on at the bottom because they're actually gonna be hidden 
below the power supply shroud so they're not hurting anything so I'll just leave them on there but anyway the way these install so there's this little rubber isolator here where that screw is and it goes into any one of these holes along here so I can just push that into the hole I kind of wiggle it a little and then you can see you just rotate the drive whoops I'm in the wrong slot there you go like that and this little catch holds this mount so it's sort of a quick change uh, way to take hard drives out so you just rotate that up, pull this out, and your whole hard drive would come out along with this tray. And then to put it back, you just push it into any one of these, drop it down. And then you can put the screws back in to secure it if you want. But I'm going to take these out. And it's got two of these uh, solid-state drive mounts already on it. And if you recall earlier, uh, this one was mounted on the power supply shroud. I took it off, but I think I'll just go ahead and balance it out and put it on top. Uh, so I'll have one, two, three. Okay, so I got this uh, assembly installed. A couple screws at the top, two at the bottom, and then there's one right here to hold the uh, power supply shroud in place. And then this cover goes in here, sort of helps cover up some of the wiring or the cable, uh, part of your cable management. And then we just have two more screws here. And then I'll uh, get some of this cleaned up a little better. All right. All right, so the case is flipped around here. We can look in the front and see. So here's the panel that I took off. This was mounted to the top of the PSU shroud. So I have it mounted up here. And I think it just looks cleaner and more balanced having all three of those uh, mounted like that. And the other thing I wanted to point out, and it's down here in the corner, so it'll be kind of hard to zoom in. But if you recall earlier, we looked at this little connector. You can see it has a little triangle there and it has a little V for voltage. This is the RGB four pin connector that actually supplies the uh, RGB power and information to the case. The RGB effects on the case. Okay, so this plugs into a special header on your motherboard. And it's important you get it oriented properly. Let me zoom in so we can really see what's going on. That's the end of my zoom. <clears throat> All right. If we look right here, this is the connector. It says JRGB1 right there. And if you look, we've got four pins. There's one, two, three, and four. And the three pins on the end here, you can see there's a G, an R, and a B. So that's for green, green, red, and blue. But the one on the end here is for your voltage. And if you look right there, you can see it says plus 12V. And it has the white around the, uh, it's printed on the motherboard. You can see it's sort of white around these, this end pin. So this is the pin here, the 12V, 12 volts that the V right there connects to. So you need to make sure you get this uh, oriented properly. So when we plug it in, it would go in like this. It's a little tricky getting everything lined up. And then it pushes over the pins. So now you can see that V, a little hard to see, but the V is right here on the end and that's the pin that has the voltage. And while we're down here talking about all these pins and connectors, I uh, turned the light on so we can sort of see a little better. So there's the plug that we just plugged in, the 4-pin, with the 12 volt on the far end. But this uh, right here, this is your 3-pin connector, and it says J Rainbow 1. And you'll notice the end pin is plus 5 volts, where the end pin on this connector over here was 12 volts. So you can see you got a plus 5 volts, and it's painted white around uh, on the motherboard white around it just like it is on the other one and then the next pin is a D and the next pin is blank and the next pin on the end here is a G so this is for your uh, RGB effects that use the three pin connectors so you just don't want to mix the four pin and the three pin connectors because the voltage supplied is different and it's time to get the graphics card uh, installed since we'll be using the RTX 4090 which is a monster of a card. It takes up three slots, so we'll clear out the way here. And the RTX 4090 is installed. Boy, that thing takes up a lot of space. 
and of course here's the power cable that is supplied with the V850i. When you install that you want to make sure you don't bend this uh, end here where the wires terminate into the plug any more than necessary. And when you do plug it in you want to make sure there is no gap right here. When you push it in you want to hear like a click so that the plug is fully engaged into the socket on the graphics card and again there's uh, no gap right here where the two meet. Uh, earlier I threw in this SATA connector cable attached it to the power supply not thinking I really was going to be using it but I threw it in there for future use. Well it turns out the uh, lighting hub here and the fan hub let me pull this out. I didn't realize that it's kind of tucked away underneath, but it actually had a uh, SATA connector to supply power to it, which of course makes perfect sense, but I uh, powered up the case and the uh, RGB effects weren't working and the fans weren't working. Well, that makes sense. I didn't have power to it. So I'm glad I threw that in there. And actually I'll be using another one of these when I hook up this uh, control hub here for the cooler. All right, so the case is all powered up and I had to turn the, the main lights out here in the room because there's so much glare off the glass. You just can't really see what's going on. It's, it's really distracting. But this is what the case looks like. You can really see the RGB effects. And, you know, I kind of like the way it looks without this front panel here. I mean, you can leave it on or take it off. The case actually looks fine with it off. So if you really want to show off any of the RGB fans in the front, you have to take that front panel off. And here we are again. I forced the light on the camera to go off. So now we just have the uh, camera basically in the dark. And I'll turn the lights on here again in a minute, but there's the other side panel there, the metal panel. And I like the way the uh, lighting effects sort of, uh, it's indirect lighting, so the lights are up under here. Let's see if we can really see them, yeah. It's pretty intense if you stare right into them, but they're reflecting off the ground or off the floor, so it, it's a nice effect. All right, so we're back with the lights on. You can see all the reflection. It's really distracting and it's hard to see what's going on until you open the side glass and then you can see the inside a little better but we've already looked around in there earlier you know the only thing I would probably change on this entire case I would add uh, provisions for fans here on the bottom at least two fans and I suppose you could sort of mount them in there but there really aren't any holes that line up with uh, 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fans but uh, I think it'd be nice if you had a couple fans in the bottom so here's the front of the case. Again, you can see the RGB effects with the front panel removed. And I still think the case looks pretty good with the panel on there. Of course, you can't really see the RGB coloring uh, from the fans with that front panel on there. But overall, it's just an amazing case. It's on that level of building your dream case. This would be on the short list of cases to use for that kind of a build. Now you have the button here for your fan controls. Again, you've got basically a high and a low. So you can either plug your fans into your motherboard for motherboard control, or you can let the Cooler Master system here do it. And here they are in, uh, so that's high. And then there's low. And it definitely changes the amount of air that they move. High, you can certainly feel it. And they really aren't that loud, so I don't know what advantage the low would give you because uh, they're certainly quieter, but the high setting is not bad at all. And as far as the RGB effects, you've got three modes here. So you basically uh, can cycle through the canned uh, modes that are sort of built into the system. You can go with solid. You can turn it off altogether if you want. And some of them here, yeah, you hold that all the way down and then the RGB just simply turns off if you don't want to use it. And let's see, I guess you hold it, comes back on. 
there's another mode that basically turns it over to the motherboard control if you want to do that. So you have some options here. All right, and back to the RGB uh, stuff here. So again, when I hit the button up here on top, uh, it changes the colors if you want to stay in static mode. And uh, the camera doesn't really do the intensity or the depth of the color justice. It sort of washes it out a little bit. So you really have to see it in person to really get a, a, a real feel for how the colors come through. So anyway, back to the uh, cooler. So I'm using the control module now. This uh, goes over to the motherboard so that you can link to this through the USB uh, header on the motherboard. And that enables you to use this Cooler Master software and uh, for your system lighting Click on that and then you can come down here and look at your lighting effects and uh, set everything up. Alright, so the last thing I'll talk about here is heat and heat buildup in your case. So when you have a large case like this, you have a fairly large volume of air inside the case and it takes a while to heat that air up. And that gives your fans, assuming you have enough fans and they're moving at the right RPM, but that gives your fans time to get that warm air out of the case. Now in a setup like this, of course, any heat that's generated from your CPU is going to be uh, rejected by the radiator and pushed right into your case. Of course, the top fan should do their job and the back fan should do its job and get that hot air out, but you're still pushing potentially a lot of warm air into the case. Of course, that means that your graphics card now is pulling that same warm air in to it. So in the unlikely event that you're stressing your CPU and your graphics card at the same time, which is a worst case scenario, and you're dumping all of that heat into your case, especially if you have a card that is uh, not pushing the air out the back like the old reference cards used to do. So you're creating heat here, you're dumping it into the case, and again, you're relying on whatever fans you've got to get that heat out. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stress the system a little bit stress the graphics card and let's just see what happens. So I'm using Prime 95 to stress the system. Uh, our overclock here is about 4.7 gigahertz. And I've been running it for a while. Now this is actually, I calibrated this thermometer and uh, it is showing, you can see, just under 30 degrees Celsius. So we're about 29 and a half degrees Celsius. That's the temperature of the air coming out of the top of the case. The CPU package, if you can see it there, is showing, actually let me just open the door, is showing 89 degrees, 88, 89. And uh, I was actually experimenting with leaving this open so it's not restricting any airflow. And I'll watch the temperature up there and it actually looks like it comes down a couple of degrees as compared to when I have this closed. So the only way air can get in is through these sides and a little bit at the top and uh, a little bit and not really much at the bottom. It's pretty much the sides. And again we are just under 30 degrees. It's about 21 Celsius in the room and with that front panel closed Again, it does seem to go up just a little bit compared to when it's open. So, something to think about. All right, so we're using some 3D Mark uh, to do some GPU stressing. You can see we're using uh, around 300 watts, a little over, a little under. So that should be dumping some heat into the system. So let's see what our temperature is now. So we are right at right at about 30. All right, some more advanced stress testing. So we're running over 400 watts through the GPU. So that should dump some heat into the system. Let's check out our thermometer right now. And surprisingly, we're only just, just barely above 30 degrees on the heat coming out of the top of the case. So I would have expected that to be a little higher, but 
maybe not. Okay, so we're up to just a tick over 30, actually 31. So we'll see how much higher it climbs. All right, so the maximum temperature I saw was 32 degrees Celsius on the air exiting the case at the top. Uh, I've got the stress tests all turned off right now, so we're just sort of cooling down. Uh, I'm a little surprised. I really would have expected a little more heat coming out of there. Now it is, you know, 21 degrees Celsius in the room, so we're not running uh, in a really warm room currently, but I would say that this case uh, can definitely handle the heat. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, the CPU is a 12700 KF uh, on there, so it's not the it's not the beast I've got over here in the other test system. This one's got the 13900 K, but it still produces a fair amount of heat. And that does remind me I need to post the specs, so I'll get that up here in a moment. But overall, my thoughts are this is an amazing case. It's huge, it's a beast, it's built like a tank. Uh, the ability to build pretty much any system you can think of in this case really goes a long way. Now right now it retails for, hold on to your hat, $549. But right now on Amazon it is $366. But of course the prices change all the time with Amazon. You blink and it goes up and blink again and it goes back down. But I think, you know, for a case like this, this is a, you know, I won't say once in a lifetime, but this is something, you know, if you're going to build that dream system you've been thinking of, this is the case that would definitely uh, be on that list. And again, a really cool feature that you don't see in very many cases uh, is the modularity that allows you to flip the motherboard, in fact, the entire back plane, flip it over so it's on this side of the case, which lets you take the glass door and put it on this side. So if you're building a system and this side of the case is up against your desk or up against a wall somewhere and you can't see all of your components, well, you can put the glass on this side so that you can see everything in your build. And that's a cool feature to have. So I would give this a very well-deserved Overclockers Club Editor's Choice Award. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>